Uh, speaking of Christmas, retail is usually pretty big through that period. Um, we're not really seeing a great deal of, uh, I guess, positive news coming out of retail globally. Uh, yeah, we've yeah. seen some uh, this year. We've seen some very large scalps uh, in terms of major fashion houses that yeah. have filed for bankruptcy. One as late as this morning, uh, we're reading about in the papers today. Brooks Brothers going down. Uh, not not a healthy place right now. No, it's not. You know, and this is globally, as you mentioned. You know, and I'm just curious to know whether they're still. You know, the fashionistas are still buying a Birkin bags. They're buying those luxury goods. Uh, they must be doing it online, Will, because when I walk the streets of Sydney, in the city, there's no one in here today. It's it's very, very uh, deserted. It's deserted on buses. It's deserted on light rail. I live at Coogee and I come in. There's not a lot of people around. No, but that, and let's flip that for a minute, because on the other side, we're seeing the, the, the major fashion houses, the fundamentals, you know, they're not so, doing so well. But on the other side of that equation, we're seeing the big tech guys go very well. Oh. Um, so the bricks and mortar, not so great, but the, yeah, the bits oh, and look bytes. at Amazon. Look at those numbers coming out. They're just incredible. You know, the, those earnings that uh, were released to market, I think, on Thursday of last week, you know, Apple just shot the lights out. Amazon, you know, ridiculous. I think the earnings per share, they were thinking it might be $1.50, it ended up being 10 bucks. So, you know, strong, strong growth. And that's where everyone, as you said, everyone's shopping online. And are they buying those luxury items? Uh, there's a lot of people out there that are doing very, very well at the moment. And uh, there's some that are created and businesses that are being hemorrhaged. And are they going to survive without government assistance? You know, that zombie... Um, uh, zombie company mindset. Mm. Mate, look, uh, I think, and, and segueing back into tech, you know, brick, bricks and mortar and the combination or the hybrid, yeah. uh, I mean, look at Atlassian, you know, they're buying into wealth management now, you know, they're making some it's big It's an extension of their business model. It's data. Yeah. Uh, and so we're seeing some some fantastic moves, uh, you know, by some of the businesses that can afford to move. Yes. Um, and we're seeing some unfortunate situations here where, with, with a number of businesses that perhaps just need to get out and partner. Well, there's the opportunities and that's where, you know, mergers and acquisitions and opportunities that, you know, strategic boards look at. Um, it, it, players that are playing in their space, can they be bolted on and offer a different service or uh, increase your offering across the, the, the spectrum? That's what business is all about. And there's, there's champions and there's others that are just going to fall by the wayside and they might be, you know, um, cobbled together with other, other companies and create a powerhouse. So, uh, that's just strategic thinking, and that's what market forces do. Now let's talk property. So um, we spoke rare earths and, and real estate last week. Uh, speaking over the weekend to some friends in New York City, everyone's leaving. So what does that say to property in New York City? Well, I don't know. What does it say? Uh, you know, you, you, you think about, if you're looking at um, you know, the commercial space, what's happening to the likes of WeWork and what's happening, I mean, that was where it was founded with the... Um, uh, with the uh, the derelict buildings in in America in New York City that were offered to you know reface them and create a a, a corporate environment and a workplace shared environment uh, that whole mantra. So if people are leaving there, where are the jobs? What's happening? You know, people just saying, well, I've had enough. I might go to the Midwest or I go to may go to Florida. I, I haven't got answers for that. I mean, these are unheralded times. No one's lived through this before in, that's uh, that our age. And it's just going to be a work in progress to see where the dust falls. Pete, last week uh, there was some big announcements in, with respect to strategic and critical metals in, in the US. We spoke briefly about it. You know, the rare earths piece with uh, production uh, plans. Electric for... vehicles and all that and magnets and batteries and you name it, yeah. So some big opportunities there for Australian companies like Linus and others who are in rare earths. Yes. Um, looking at that, uh, that relationship with the US and looking at that production facility there in Texas. Well, exactly. And that's going, and it's backed by the US government because they're realising that China's cornered a great percentage of the market. It's it's like a little bit probably like the silver market that the Bunker Hunts tried to corner in the 80s. Rare earth's a different animal, but I'm just saying it's, you know, they've cornered the market. They've got a large deal of the supply and the US is saying, well, we're not prepared to put our, uh, at risk, that supply side. So they're, they're doing and not only prepared, but sign the necessary documentation to increase their ability to, you know, ratchet this up. They see the big picture. They're, they're conscious as far as the battery demand, magnets, you name it. I mean, laptops, everything's got a magnet in it. Everything needs that rare earth. And uh, the US government from missiles to all forms so of armaments, to, yeah, exactly. They, they look at the consumption patterns and what we're going to be moving forward to. Have a look at, you know, who would have thought that Tesla what it would have done. I mean, you get a share price. It's just, it's beyond 
comprehension. Let's talk about Tesla for a minute because literally it wasn't going so well back in January this year, yeah. right? It's capitalized in a, in a significant way on, a, on on the opportunity that COVID prevented or yes. presented it. Uh, and today it's, it's it's outperforming as far as anyone's concerned. Exactly. You've got a lot of the big governments. I think there was one of the Scandinavian countries are offering 9,000 euro to go and buy an electric vehicle so that they, the, the enticement is there to get you out of you know, that fossil fuel era, what happens to the fossil fuel producers? Is it an earlier death knell than what we thought? Um, there just seems to be so many moving parts to the global economy that even I, I think most analysts would have thought, well, even visionaries, you know, 2035, it'll be a slow progression. Yes, there'll be a lot of take up, but it seems like everything's on hyperdrive at the moment. You know, that 2035 that people are embracing electric vehicles, is that, that now going to be 2022 sort of thing? What's going to happen to oil consumption? When do we start flying? Um, you know, your... Travel, accommodation, oh, hotels, man, uh, tourism. Tourism. You know, all of those factors. Where's the consumption? Where's the demand? Demand is everything. I mean, it's great to have a product, but if no one wants it, you can't sell something that no one wants. Pete, good segue into the final chart we're going to look at today. Um, we bring it up here. It is all about the uh, the cash rates, yep. I, I, Aussie versus US. Uh, this is a daily chart that we pulled over the weekend. Um, obviously, over here, we can see it's 17-year low back in uh, March 20. Yeah. Um, if we're looking up here at the 18-month high. Um, it's been a strong move to some, the upside. Some pretty powerful signals there. Well, there are, and you know, many many analysts and many many observers are saying are we in overbought territory. It's had a strong move. That Aussie has just you know ratcheted up from May, June, and July to the detriment, of course. You know, it's been on the been on the piggyback to some extent of China. That's had a very strong rebound, and of course that US dollar coming off so heavily that it was you know massively overbought in that fear side going back into March the US dollar index and the US dollar. And since then, it's just been a one-way trip down. Does it move higher from here? Man, you know, it's approaching that 72 number. Um, let's see what happens as far as what the bank RBA is prepared to say this week. And it may be uh, a time to be short. Pete, good to speak with you today. And we'll wrap there. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was Peter Maguire, the CEO of XM.com, speaking to me live here in Australia. Thank you.